Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about AI and the dangers of AI and uh, scary future of AI and all that stuff. Sam Harris and company, Elon Musk and a few others, they're afraid that we're going to have dangerous, out-of-control AI that's going to do bad things, possibly, could possibly do bad things. Now, um, at some point here we're going to have to talk about volition and what uh, volition comes from or how to manufacture it if we were to manufacture it. So let's remember that that's in the background here, but let's just go forward a little bit. Um, any description of artificial intelligence that you could give that would be bad, <clears throat> any description that's been given that would be bad, I contend already exists and we have seen the results of it in action already. Uh, so I contend that as bad as you think AI could get, it's already done that. It's already been there, and we do have the results in hand. So we're going to have to set some definitions for what we mean by the computational results of AI. So whatever the results are that come out of this supercomputer that are bad, these results you know, we're going we're gonna to have to draw some analogy between the results I'm going to point to and whatever you consider some supercomputer in the future to be. And I contend that we will see basically a rerun in the future of what we've seen in the past. I don't think that there's going to be any change to basic the fundamentals of reality. So let's go forward and see what we're talking about. Everything's pretty floating right now, isn't it? <coughs> I have a lot of concretes in my head that I want to lay out for you now. So um, they are afraid, Sam Harris and company are afraid, that we're going to have an artificial intelligence that's going to be smarter than human beings and possibly take on a malicious bent. Now, what um, would it do? What's the worst it could do? The worst it could do would be destroy the world, I guess, huh? Oh, or it could come pretty close to that. It could destroy cities, let's say. Or at least millions of lives. Now, is there a distributed computational system which has come up with something which perhaps no individual human being would do by themselves, or even could do by themselves, that certainly could not do by themselves, but if an individual human were given the choice to do that, most wouldn't. Uh, or it's not thinkable that they would choose that as a goal destination, something they wanted to accomplish, and yet it's come out as the result. Is there anything that we can think of in history like that? So, if you'll allow me to draw the analogy, I'm not going to say that I've got everything concentrated under one uh, little plastic cover where there's a computer there, and I've, I'm doing all this computation here. I get to say that I'm doing the computations, though. And the computations that I'm doing are spread out across uh, a lot of people. And here's what's happening. A general goal is set. And then many different nodes try to accomplish that goal. Whatever the goal is, fill in the blank. And certain nodes come up with a way to accomplish that goal that work, and other ones don't come up with it. And the ones that do work step forward and they compete to see which of their nodes is more efficiently able to accomplish the goal or accomplish it um, better or something. And the best node, best under the criteria of accomplishing this goal, becomes the node or several nodes, those best ones, the most powerful ones and the ones that best accomplish it become the nodes that step forward and go to the next step and that we use, or that get used, or that advance. Um, an example of this is when we set the computational machinery to work to build something or lots of things that could destroy infrastructure. Bombs. 
And out of all those nodes, out of all those computational nodes, the ultimate, the biggest, the end result computational node was the atomic bomb. And we built it and we used it. Now, part of my supercomputer, part of my artificial intelligence that's separate from, above, smarter than any individual involved, part of that is the distributed knowledge of philosophy and culture. So what I'm saying is that your supercomputer is never going to be able to do more or worse or be more powerful than the philosophy distributed across volitional consciousnesses in society as we have it today. Whatever you think an, uh, uh, an AI could do that would be bad, we've done it already with our distributed computational uh, whatever. We have done the atom bomb, and the reason we did the atom bomb we, was because of another distributed computational system uh, which enslaved a society, Germany. And then, with the atom bomb in hand, we sat back and watched while another huge computational machine, using machinery far beyond any individual, enslaved Russia and half of Europe for 70 years. So these things have happened. They have been used to stifle and destroy individualism and freedom and human life, and they will continue to, to happen in that way. Any description you give of an AI is going to fit inside of my description of the computational um, spread outness of philosophy in human society. I've already got your AI. I've already got your what you are afraid of, which is some system that's more complex and powerful uh, and is able to accomplish more in a human lifetime than any given human could even imagine. It's already in place. It's been in place for a long time. And, and it's, it's, it's a very powerful system. And it's responsible for the atom bomb and for Nazi Germany and for Soviet Russia and for freedom and for the Internet. And this video that I'm talking to you on right now and electricity and all that is part of the results of this distributed computational machine. AI, as bad as it ever gets, will never be worse than uh, what we already have. So don't be scared. Well, be scared. Be very scared.